like hell. You be in your cell all day, you be hungry all the time. This ain't a place to come because it's rough in here. If you have a wall in front of you, place your hands high above your head on the concrete wall. These are our inmates from various jails in the county. They're here for anywhere from drug possession all the way up to murder. It is the largest jail system in the free world. Up to 20,000 inmates, men and women. They reflect the violent felonies, the petty crimes, and the racial tensions of the sprawling urban landscape that is Los Angeles County. LA is the biggest gang turfed in any plots of the United States. We're number one as far as gang. We have 286 inmates on this floor. It's not because of your color, it's because of the things that you do to us. We have about 150 Crips. They got me here for giving sandwiches, man. Uh, there's several Bloods mixed in. And stop putting us all in jail like they do. White Fence, which are Mexicans. And we also have South Siders, which are Mexican or Hispanic. Keep it tight. Over time, the LA County Jail's inmate roster has been a chronicle of national crime stories. Gangsters like Bugsy Siegel and Mickey Cohen, political assassin Sirhan Sirhan, actors Robert Mitchum and Robert Blake. In the 1970s, cult members gathered here to support their leader, mass murderer Charles Manson. Two decades later, hundreds of reporters and news cameras turned this parking lot into the place called Camp OJ. Listen up, gentlemen, if you're no longer holding a pair of shoes and you're wearing a heavy coat or a jacket that buttons or zips, take it off and hold it out in front of you. Today, 2,500 men and women are employed to keep order in the L.A. County Jail's eight facilities. The challenge is staggering. Prepare and deliver 75,000 meals a day, system-wide. Medicate thousands of inmates who are mentally ill and suicidal and keep an estimated eight to 9,000 gang members from killing each other. This is where it begins. A bus terminal for hundreds of prisoners arriving for their first night in jail. Thursday nights is one of our busiest nights, so this is this is pretty common. We'll probably we'll probably see about 500 in here tonight. Basically, if you get busted in the Los Angeles County, you're going to come here, if, unless you get bailed out beforehand. Other than that, you're here. You're going to see inmates coming out of the bus. They're all secured together to, to prevent escape, obviously, and to prevent them from assaulting the officers and assaulting each other. For new arrivals, the check-in process can seem like an eternity. It took a long time, about 17 hours, uh, no sleep, just a long time to get in here. A lot has changed here since the old days of manual fingerprinting and black and white mug shots. Back then, only a few inmates at a time would arrive at the jail. Everyone leave your hands where they are. <laughs> Today, 200,000 men and women are pressed through the jail's intake center each year. The tremendous number of prisoners are managed with barcode bracelets that will be used to track their progress through the jail system. Still fresh off the street, the new prisoners are led to the search room. Many have never set foot in a jail before. Some don't speak English. If you have anything holding up your pants, plastic, string, or a belt, remove it. If there is anything in your hair, plastic, string, or a belt, remove it. Sometimes, it, you know, it might take 13 hours, it might take 14 hours, it might take 15 hours. It all depends on how many people is, is coming in at that same time you're coming in. 
When I say go, you're going to remove your socks. You're going to do this by peeling them off of your feet inside out. Hold one sock in each hand. Hold them out in front of you while you're looking down at the ground. Do not shake them, wave them, snap them, or swing them. Go. This is the first of countless searches that inmates will undergo as the jail staff works to prevent weapons and contraband from finding their way inside. You have a long sleeve shirt on. Roll up the long sleeve that's covering your wristband. We're not concerned with your name. All we want to see is the metal clasp that is holding it together. When you step up to the doorway, you're going to show your wristband to my partner. Yellow line cell one. Let's go. Have your wristband ready to be scanned. Put your back against the rail. Wristband. Right here. Yellow line cell one. Yellow line cell one. Put your back against the rail. Wristband. Hours pass as the prisoners wait for their turn to be live scanned. This biometrics process adopted in 1993 will scrutinize and record each inmate's physical likeness and fingerprints. But even after four hours or more inside the maze of corridors and search rooms, the new arrivals have only begun their transformation from individual to inmate. From here it's to the showers. And basically every inmate that comes in here gets to get to shower. I'm going to keep lice and other little diseases out of our jail. Come on, guys. Up to 100 prisoners are showered here at a time. Oh, line walking. They emerge wearing jailhouse jumpsuits and proceed to medical screening. Take any medication? No. Nope. Have you ever taken psychiatric medication? No. Nope. Here, they wait again for their turn at the medical window. Do you hear voices that no one else can hear in your head? Yeah. The only food they will see for 12 hours or more is a jail sandwich. Like a nightmare. All day process. You wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, you know. Finally, the new arrivals are confined to the holding tanks until the jail is ready to give them a bed. This is basically the end of the line. Uh, they, they either go to uh, Men's Central Jail, which is in uh, that direction, or over to Twin Towers Correctional Facility, which is uh, right, right over here behind us. It is a routine that has gone on in the Los Angeles jail since 1926. And while the scenery has changed, the experience remains the same for new inmates today. What awaits is a grueling and sometimes terrifying journey through a world that was unimaginable only hours ago on the street. The eight different facilities that make up the vast Los Angeles County jail system are spread out over 50 miles of Southern California. It all began with a single building that now stands empty. The county's original jail, the Hall of Justice, opened its doors in 1926 with just over 500 cells on top of a 15-story granite tower in the heart of Los Angeles. A one-stop legal system, it also contained criminal courts, the sheriff's headquarters, and the coroner's office. The Hall of Justice has also done its share for Hollywood. The landmark edifice is familiar as headquarters in television shows like Dragnet and Get Smart. After the Northridge earthquake of 1994, the building was red tagged as unsafe and officially closed. Today, the centerpiece of the LA County jail system is a penal colony a few blocks away. It consists of the Men's Central Jail and the Twin Towers Correctional Facility. Together, their inmate population is over 11,000 men and women, more than half of the entire system. The jails are operated by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. The complex is the first assignment for most graduates of the academy. Well, basically, everyone starts out in custody and you do however many years here until you get to your patrol station, so we're all on a waiting list. And meanwhile, this is just a, a very good learning experience. You learn how to communicate, you learn 
the workings of basically who you're going to be dealing with out on the street. So it's actually a benefit mm -hmm. to be in here. After a long night of processing, new inmates are instructed to walk single file along red and blue lines to one of the two downtown jails. Hands in your pockets, gentlemen, stay on the line. Okay. Hands in your pockets, gentlemen. Hands in your pockets. An inmate walking down the main hallway with his hands free can assault another inmate or he can assault staff. So we insist that they tuck their hands in their pockets as a safety feature for both ourselves and for the other inmates. Most adult male prisoners who are deemed fit for general population will follow the blue lines to men's central jail. This is just under a million square feet. It's the largest jail in the free world. Uh, our inmate population today is somewhere above 7,000. We generally run right around 7,000, but when we've had riots, we've had as many as 10,000 in here. It's a lot of inmates, and they're in for a myriad of charges, uh, multiple murders, rape, robbery, burglary, every charge known to man, they're in here for. I got 25 years to life in the penitentiary, man! And I ain't never going home! You got Inside the windowless jail, deputies called prowlers patrol the dim cell blocks with flashlights checking for drugs, homemade liquor, and weapons. Yeah, we got, we got. As a general rule, you don't step right close to the bars. You could always get stabbed. Um, through the bars, you know, if you get too close, you can get grabbed. They'll sometimes, if they're in a bad mood or something going wrong with the module, they might throw stuff at you. It could be bodily material, fluids and stuff, the fun things. Module 4700 is a high security area. Most inmates in this module have been sentenced and are awaiting transfer to a state prison like San Quentin or Pelican Bay. Life without. I'll be sick this life without. I'll be gone about two weeks. Ryan Willis has been here 37 months. He was convicted of murder with special circumstances. Willis maintains he is innocent. He says the jury found him guilty of lying in wait and incinerating his victim. He's living in here and cold and freezing in here. And, you know, life is hell in here. You know, it's miserable. You know, I've been miserable since I've been in here. You know, food's cold. You know, we don't get no assistance around here. The deputies full of crap. Opened in 1965, the Men's Central Jail is crowded. Modern standards for new jail construction require more spacious accommodations. With so many men to house, improvement is difficult. We're just overcrowded. You know, that's just a fact of life. And uh, we do, just do the best we can, try to keep them off the floor. 7,000 men, as many as six to a cell. The challenge for inmates is not only physical, but mental. It's just all about respect. If, if, if respect is given, then you ain't, it's no foul ups, it's no mess ups. But if it's disrespect, then you, you, can, have a, you can have a problem. Deputies could have an actual problem on their hand. Like many inmates here, Terry Clemens is from an area of Los Angeles known as South Central. Shootings, drive-bys, you know, and I was walking out of the store and, and four guys tried to rob me. And I took, I took a knife. Uh, fortunately, I'm still living. Um, that's South Central, L.A. Because of the potential for violence against deputies, Module 4700 is generally patrolled from a safe distance. We call it the Hanser Tube, but it's kind of a nickname for it, but that's inside the uh, officer's area, and um, he keeps him out of danger. He's, he's locked in there, can't be got to by the inmates, and he can see inside all the cells on each side of the tube. The tubes are kept dark so that inmates in the cells cannot see past the one-way glass. They do not know they are being observed until it's too late. They do a lot of illegal stuff while they're in jail, such as uh, maybe smoking uh, drugs or marijuana, what have you. 
They make a lot of different shanks, like the jail made knives. They make a lot of those in here. We can obviously observe for that. While Officer Fleischer's watch proceeds without incident, Sergeant Michael Winters prepares to enter another cell block. Its long, forbidding walkways are called freeways. Okay, we're going down one of the freeways or one of the rows in this uh, disciplinary module. It's 26 cells per row. There's four rows per each of the two modules. This is all for inmates who have violated jail rules. This is where all the people that run amok on the streets that you read about in the newspaper, this is where they come. And if they are so dangerous once they come in here that they can't be taken elsewhere in a less secure surrounding, this is where they come. This is where the worst of Los Angeles County gets to live. Moments after Winter's arrival, he spots a familiar problem. The floor is wet because somebody from the smell of it flooded his cell. One of the few acts of rebellion available to inmates in L.A. County Jail is to flood their cells by backing up their toilets. They're not in here for being model citizens, so we do have some problems with them. You know, they'll, just as an act of recalcitrance, they'll flood their cell like that guy did, or they'll throw food. You can see they've thrown food on some of the walls. Three deputies have been dispatched to escort the rebellious inmate out of his cell. One deputy shakes a can of pepper spray as they walk. Sometimes just doing that is enough to discourage somebody because they know you've got it in your hand. I've yet to find an inmate that enjoyed getting sprayed in the face with it. The response from other inmates is unmistakable. Instead of receding, the floodwaters inside the disciplinary unit get deeper. As you can see, the row is flooding. Somebody up on top has flooded their cells. They've done a very good job of flooding it. Soon, an inmate work crew arrives to mop up the mess. To outsiders, the scene is miserable, but the staff takes it all in stride. This is really the comet. You know, the, the time that you start to worry is when it's quiet, but when they're rattling the bars or flooding the rows, they're busy doing something. Once it gets quiet, then you start to worry. What the deputies have to worry about are the unseen dangers that keep them on high alert. 24 hours a day. We are in L.A. County Jail. Anything can happen in here, you know. You can, you can have a week left and something can happen. You know, tomorrow's not promised to nobody. It's all up to you. You know, it's a scary place in here. Men's Central Jail, Los Angeles, California. It is a mind-numbing maze of corridors, tunnels, and steel stacked five stories high. The largest facility of its kind in the United States. Okay, we're going out onto the 2,000th floor. This is our largest floor in the building as far as inmate population. There's upwards of 2,000 inmates here every day housed on this floor. They're searching down there. So when we search the inmates, we bring them out in their underwear so that we can ensure they don't have weapons with them. And then we've got deputies out here for security purposes with, uh, with gas. The big red canister is, is a tear gas OC spray combination. And the other weapon is a pepper ball gun. Inside this million-square-foot facility, searches or shakedowns occur almost every day. The safety of inmates and deputies is at stake. On this day, deputies have just completed a search of a dormitory that holds 50 men, a shower, and a toilet. It was converted from a recreation room at a time when crowding forced prison officials to add more beds to handle the rising population. This has all been fun on this floor. What we have here is some shanks that have required a little bit of work. These are, uh, this is pretty much the bracket of the underside of a bunk. Well, this stuff's like screwed, but it's pretty dangerous, plain and simple. It's got a good handle. It's a pretty good piece of metal. As long as they get a good point on it, start sharpening and get a good point on it, it's pretty dangerous. This is what's, what's called here in jail as a bone crusher, because with enough force, it'll actually crush your bone. We have several hundred assaults, inmate and on inmate assaults every year. The primary reason? 
gangs. It is not a new phenomenon, as in many urban areas, there have been street gangs in Los Angeles since the 1940s. The gang population inside the jail has grown steadily since 1965. By 1985, 87% of all crimes committed in the jail were perpetrated by gang members. There's a lot of gang members in here, you know? It's like being on the streets, you just deal with it, you know? But in here it's a little bit more, more cliche because you might go in a cell with, you know, all kind of different gang members. That, you know, they might not like you, you might not like them. Other than on the streets of Los Angeles, Men's Central Jail has the highest concentration of gangs in the city. The most powerful is the Mexican Mafia, which expects Hispanic gang members to pay taxes in the form of money, drugs, or outside food to Mafia representatives in the jail. Those who don't pay are marked for retribution. They are called Green Lighters. Green Lighter is a, is a gang inmate, usually a Hispanic inmate, who has fallen out of disfavor with his gang, and so somebody puts a green light or a go light to say it's okay to go ahead and, and kill or injure this inmate. To counter the violence, county officials set up Operation Safe Jail to monitor and manage the custody of known gang members. Deputy Armando Barrera monitors the activities of Latino gangs. Uh, here is module 35 and 3700, uh, what's come to be known as the gang module. So we're united, we take care of each other, we help each other, you know what I mean? Southern United Raza. Southern United Raza. The majority of them are already three strikers, 25 to life, serious felony uh, charges as far as murders, robberies, carjackings. Um, as you can see here, they're very proud of where they're from. Uh, they like to display their, uh, their gangs uh, by using hand gestures. Uh, those two hands together, uh, resembling an A for the Avenidas gang or Avenues gang in or about uh, Lincoln, the city of Lincoln Heights. A few more throwing a, uh, a W, what they refer as throwing a W, meaning displaying a W, uh, representing the west side of uh, Los Angeles. We have gangs stemming from Primera Flats, Cuatro Flats, Puente, Eastside Puente, Townsmen, Avenues, um, Hawaiian Gardens, um, Wilmas, which is Wilmington, Rancho San Pedro, all the way to San Fernando, to Clanton, to Dog Patch. No sleep, man. I can't get no sleep. You don't even know if it's day or night. Day or night. A wall of snapshots in the gang unit office confirms the diversity and numbers of gang members inside the LA County Jail. The majority, they tattoo their, their gang, their city, their area codes, their monikers, maybe pictures of their children, their wives, names of their dead homeboys. The inmates in Men's Central Jail represent the streets and neighborhoods that make LA County one of the most diverse populations in the country. Listen up, there shouldn't be any talking in my line. Keep your hands in your pockets, shoulder against the wall, keep my line moving. That diversity is very apparent in the section of the jail where the prisoners wear bright yellow pants to distinguish them from the general population. This is Module 5200, better known as the Gay Dorm. This is a dorm that holds homosexuals. There's uh, over 80 inmates. We can hold about 120 inside here. I'd say the two main crimes in here would be drug possession and prostitution. Uh, I have drug charge, possession of methamphetamine. I was sentenced to 16 months for about $20 worth of speed. Homosexuals are often targets of violent assault in jail. They have been kept separated from the general population since 1975, when the first gay housing unit was established at the original Hall of Justice Jail. Today, this protective measure brings its own set of challenges. 12% of the inmates are HIV positive. While jail policy prohibits sexual activity, it is impossible to stop. 
In 2002, an outside agency was allowed access to the gay dorms to distribute condoms, a progressive move in the effort to slow the epidemic of HIV among the men crowded inside LA's Men's Central Jail. Across the street, connected by a windowless sky bridge, there is another kind of fortress. Thousands more men and women are confined to the high-tech compound known as the Twin Towers. From its earliest days, the LA County Jail has been a landmark in its city and in the public eye. I think every time that I walked into the Hall of Justice, there was a sense of mystique, of history, uh, of, of past fame, if you will, and glory, because it really was the focal point of justice in the county. And so while you had the coroner's office that processed all of those unfortunate deaths, if you will, of uh, stars, starlets, people that were famous throughout the world, you also had all of the trials that were going on. The trial of actor Errol Flynn on charges of statutory rape took place here in 1942. Because of his reputation as a Casanova, his acquittal fostered the phrase, in like Flynn. In 1949, actor Robert Mitchum, known at the time for his roles in The Big Steel, Out of the Past, and 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, spent two months in lockup for possession of marijuana. In 1962, one of the most beautiful and famous women in the world graced the hall with her presence in the morgue. Marilyn Monroe was autopsied here after an apparent overdose of sleeping pills. Six years later, Los Angeles coroner Thomas Noguchi conducted the official autopsy on the body of presidential candidate Robert Kennedy. Thirteen floors above the morgue, this cell was specially constructed to house Sirhan Sirhan during his trial for Kennedy's assassination. Cell 1310 was equipped with its own shower so that Sirhan would not have to leave the cell except to walk to a courtroom a few steps away. In 1970, Charles Manson's followers held a daily vigil outside the hall during his trial for multiple murders in the Hollywood Hills. More recently, high-profile inmates like O.J. Simpson and actor Robert Blake have been cloistered away on the first floor of the men's central jail. It is an area of 8 by 12 foot cells that is closed to cameras and visitors. Yet while the eyes of the world focused on the noteworthy and famous in L.A. County Jail, tens of thousands of faceless prisoners have struggled with incarceration in this same spot. At this time, 7,000 are in the men's central jail and 5,000 more are across the street in a 21st century citadel known as the Twin Towers Correctional Facility. We control all the pod doors, all the cell doors, all the televisions, all the lights, and each pod door and each cell actually has an intercom, which we can talk to the inmates. Built in 1997, the ultra-modern maximum security design sets the standard for the jail of the future. Many of its inmates, however, blur the distinction between criminal behavior and mental illness. It is the largest jail system in the country and in the world. And right behind me here at Twin Towers is the largest mental health facility uh, in the country. I mean, bar none. It goes beyond any hospital. Um, it's just an enormous system. Tower One holds 2,000 male inmates who receive psychiatric care and medication, or who are classified as violent sexual predators. This is Twin Towers, Module 152. The men are watched around the clock from a control station whose panopticon design allows a deputy to look into each of the 96 cells within the module. Over here in D-Pod, we have gentlemen sitting around watching TV. E-pod, we have some more inmates lined up on the stairs, waiting for chow. F-pod, a couple guys using the phones, a couple guys watching TVs. Guys up on the stairs trying to do exercise. 
Thick security glass stands where one expects to find bars. It reduces all but the loudest shouts to a low whisper. The calm extends to the deepest recesses of the Twin Towers jail. It's an area called the Medical Services Building, separated from the rest of the prison by its own electronic security doors. This is the place where the jail's most mentally disturbed inmates are cared for. Oh, they have bipolar, uh, schizo, you name it. They have it all. We have it all here. They're very unpredictable. They come in off the street. They can be combative at times. We've had incidences where they've bit deputies, bit personnel. In cases where mental health staff declare an inmate to be a danger to themselves or others, county doctors can order the deputies to place the inmate in four-point restraints. During a four-point procedure, a team of deputies secures the patient's wrists and ankles to the hospital bed so he can be closely monitored and stabilized. Uh, this one here happens to be a spitter, so it gives everybody a heads up that uh, if you open the door, he may spit on you. While the Twin Towers jail continues to cope with its mission as one of the largest mental hospitals in America, the towers must also face the problem that plagues every jail ever built, escape. The most celebrated occurred in the summer of 2001 when inmate Kevin Pullum was returning to jail from court after being convicted of attempted murder. This man made a fake ID badge using a picture of Eddie Murphy from Dr. Doolittle 2. That was the hot movie of, of the summer. He had his court clothes, so he changed back into his regular court clothes from his, um, from his jailhouse uniform and literally walked out the door. A routine scan of wristbands confirmed one inmate had not returned from court. That's when we started reviewing our video and we reviewed it and he was on it. And the last shot of him is walking out the front door. So it was quite embarrassing at the time. In fact, it was, it was a little bit humorous because he got into the elevator and he apparently didn't know which button to push. He ends up pushing the wrong button. He goes downstairs into where the kitchen area is of Twin Towers. He walks out, he sort of looks around, he gets back on the elevator, he goes back up. He, this time he's at the right floor, gets out. And then you see him just kind of shows the little ID, walks right out the door to freedom. Kevin Pullum's freedom lasted only 18 days. He was captured on Skid Row, just a mile from the jail. As Pullum was processed back into the jail system, he likely saw more fortunate inmates awaiting a more favorable routine. One that is repeated hundreds of times each week at LA County Jail, the walk to freedom. they are enormous by any standard. Square footage of this facility is uh, 1,452,000 feet. A monument to crime in Los Angeles County, these twin towers stand side by side but carry out very different missions. Tower one, the men's side, mental observation and medication. Then there's tower two, Tower two is mainly female inmates, and it's the only female housing in the county of Los Angeles for uh, female inmates. Can't get a job anywhere. It seems like nobody wants to hire me. I talk different, I act different, and everything. You know, not the same culture. End up prostituting on the streets. Here I am in lovely, free California hotel. Until 1997, when the Twin Towers was opened, Female inmates in L.A. County were held in a separate facility, the Sybil Brand Institute. For the most part, their crimes were no different from the 2,500 women who are locked in Tower 2 today. They are here for anything from drug possession and prostitution to robbery and murder. 
Huh? I don't have a room. I sleep out here. This is um, 252 C Pod. This is the uh, day room where we watch TV, play cards. This is where they talk on the phone over here. And stuff. That's the bathroom. And this is where we sleep. Oh, clown stuff. That's what she drew. And you can see the difference between the male side and the female side on the way they're acting. The biggest difference is these inmates here take no psych meds. Where the males that do take psych meds, it slows them down. I'm not a bad girl. <laughs> what got me in the time? I'm scounding. Not reporting to my parole officer. I'm from the United Riders LAMC Motorcycle Club. I'm a gangbanger also. Just got two years sentence in the pen. I got arrested for um, having checks with the intent to defraud, but they weren't in my possession. They were just in the house I was in at the time. Breezy pot is, is her, is, is her, is not her favorite pot. I'm here for, actually, for um, threatening and obscene phone calls. It gave me a sentence of 73 days. I'll do approximately 41, 42 days. While the male inmates in Tower 1 are locked up at all times, many of the women in Tower 2 are assigned to outside work details. I'm here for burglary, commercial burglary. Booking information operator 5, you have a booking number. The inmate answering service established in 1989 is staffed by low security female inmates. They take thousands of calls from people inquiring whether their missing husbands, wives or children are in jail. He was just arrested two days ago. They call in, um, they think we're um, just operators answering the phone. Some people will know because they've been in custody before. So they'll say, I know you're an inmate just like me and da da da, yeah. But like she didn't know. When he's in here, he's in here for a grand theft money property of $400. His bill is 20000 before the Twin Towers Correctional Facility was in operation, each of the L.A. County jails prepared its own meals using inmate labor. But today, the meals are prepared in the Twin Towers' massive central kitchen, and the female inmates carry out the daunting task. They must prepare enough to feed the inmates and staff at the Twin Towers jail and the men's central jail across the street. They're making about 45,000 meals a day. It smells like chicken. Burritos for the staff, but they're having uh, like a goulash type of thing. Uh, macaroni, hamburger, all mixed together with like a spaghetti sauce. The real name is hamburger casserole. We're making enough for 14,000 inmates. And what that entails is about 2,160 pounds of ground chicken, 840 pounds of elbow macaroni, 48 pounds of beef bouillon, 330 pounds of diced celery, and 330 pounds of diced onions. Also, 1,660 pounds of vegetables. I was caught shoplifting in, in a Macy's department store and I took a sweater and that's basically, that's why I'm here. The food is packed into thermal containers designed to keep it warm on its journey through the Twin Towers Correctional Center and across the street to Men's Central Jail. But inside Men's Central, the mess halls stand mostly empty. The majority of the 7,000 inmates are fed in their cells as a safety measure. The violence level in this jail is now to the point where if we put 150 inmates in the cafeteria to eat, throw the bodies out the door once they started fighting. Thank you for this uh, AFDA approved recommended daily allowance of lunch. A small number of inmates deemed to present a lower risk for violence will be served in one of the few remaining cafeterias. The meals are supervised from above by deputies specially trained in the use of non-lethal force. They are authorized to fire chemical agents into the group to stop a disturbance before it can grow into a riot. At the Twin Towers jail, 5,000 more meals arrive that will be served directly in the high security pods. See your right hand, four fingers flattened together. 
a lucky few will be released before dinner is served. This is your clothing? Okay. This inmate, convicted of writing bad checks, will spend the balance of his 30-day sentence at home, thanks to L.A. County's electronic house arrest program. This is the ankle bracelet. It sends a signal to the main unit that's connected to his phone line, that's connected to the uh, company uh, computer. Um, it monitors all his movement at home, at work, or wherever he may be at while he's on the program. All right, Walters. Zero five nine. Need you to sign for your clothing. Inmate Eddie Walters has been here four months. Larry Dixon, a week. Gentlemen, hurry up and get dressed. Get dressed, get dressed. I go back to my neighborhood. I go back to my, to my home. And I continue living. And uh, hopefully I don't ever have to see these doors ever again. For most short-term inmates, the trip through L.A. County Jail will end as it began, only in reverse. They put on their street clothes, they sign for their personal belongings, then they cut off their wristband. Adios.